And what I want to do in this session, I want to start communicating with John Smith. I'm taking a simple route. I want to use Teams in a very elementary way. So I'm not creating Teams and channels yet. Just want to start a chat conversation with John Smith. I can go up to my search bar and look up John Smith. I see John here. Just click on John. And then I will have the draft on the left hand side. This is my section area. This is the draft for John Smith. I have these tabs at the top here. I have these icons on the right hand side. This is my conversation workspace. This is my message box and the controls I have at the bottom. Let me start with the left hand side. And if I hover over John Smith here, the profile picture of John Smith, I see John's contact card. And this is one of the key concepts in Teams and across the Microsoft Office applications. So I see John's profile picture. I have his status. This is offline or last seen 13th of October. I have John's name, title, department. I can chat to John Smith. I can do video call, audio call, and I can also look up his org chart and LinkedIn profile. I can send John a quick message from here. And this area here helps me decide on the right communication tool. I can choose to communicate with John. So last scene was on the 13th of October, free all day. This is coming from John's Outlook calendar. And then I have the time zone and the difference in timing or the time difference between me and John Smith. And if I move to the contact details here, this is John's email address, mobile number, work number, and location. Then John reports to Alice Williams. She's John's manager. I can show organization from here, which I'm going to get to in a second. And then I have LinkedIn profile here. And we have some different, like several possible matches for John Smith. I need to click on this one and sign in to select the right profile. Then uh, the LinkedIn section here will show me a couple of experiences for John Smith from LinkedIn. So it is a comprehensive snapshot of John's profile. Notice here that John does not have a profile picture. What Teams does when users don't have a profile picture, it assigns profile picture initials and colors based on specific algorithm. While the exact algorithm isn't publicly disclosed, it follows a consistent pattern for generating the colors and initials. Now, the other thing to notice here, between send a quick message and last scene, a couple of things can be displayed here. The first thing is status message. So if you have a status message for user, it will be displayed here. And the way to do it, you can go to your profile picture and set status message. So this is your status message. If you have this set up in your profile, then it will be, oh, let's, yeah, it will be displayed here in this area and the other message which will be shown here is the out of office so status and out of office messages will be displayed here for users now i can go down and click on show more and this will give me a broader overview of john's contact card so i can see that john works for get back to basics company if i go to this is the overview which we've seen so it was the overview now contact if i go to organization i can see the org chart for john smith so john smith is the account manager in the sales department and ellis williams is his manager go to linkedin and now what teams or the contact card what it does does the call to linkedin and then it comes up with some matching profiles so i need to sign in and choose the right one from here if i want to do that let's go back to contact and i want to highlight a few points here first a big chunk of the information here is gathered from azure ad or the new microsoft inter id teams gathered john's title department manager phone numbers location and time zone from azure ad Second, Teams uses UTC to calculate time zone differences. Third, Microsoft Teams leverages the user's Outlook calendar to determine their availability status and display this information on the user's contact card. Now, this integration with Outlook allows Teams to access the user's calendar information and provide real-time visibility. 
into their schedule and availability to other team members. In my opinion, Teams is very smart in collecting this type of information to help users at a glance decide on how to communicate with other users or team members. For example, when I see that users are offline, I cannot initiate audio or video calls, but I can send a chat message or maybe just send an email. If users are out of office, traveling for example, I'm not going to call their mobile or work numbers. It doesn't make sense. Now, if I see users are online, I can initiate audio or video calls right from the contact card. It's very simple and straightforward. And finally, the time zone difference helps a lot, especially with global locations and companies that have their people scattered over different countries and continents. If your local time is 9 a.m. and someone else's local time is 9 p.m., chances are you won't start audio or video call with that person. It doesn't make sense. Probably you start chatting and then based on the response, you can call or escalate the call to other means of communications. Now, the best part, this contact card features integrated across other Microsoft apps like Outlook, SharePoint, and the Office Suite. Now, if I go back here and go to Outlook, for example, and let me do new email, and here let's do John Smith. And if I just hover over John's name, I can get to John's contact. So it's the same information I have in Teams. So again, this is across all Microsoft applications. So I can see John's title, department. I can click on call, which is audio call, video call, or mobile number. I can send an email, I can chat, and I can look at the LinkedIn profile for John Smith. These are the contact details. This is the time zone, email, and then we have um, work and mobile numbers, location. I can click on show more here. This is Alice William, or Alice, the manager. And also I can show organization, look at the LinkedIn profile. Let's click on show more. And this is the expanded view of John's contact card. We have a couple of tabs here added. We have files. These are the files that have been shared between John and Alice, and then we have the email communication here. Let's cancel out of that, go back to my Teams. So to me, no matter where you are within the Microsoft ecosystem, you have easy access to the vital information about your colleagues. And this streamlines communication and collaboration and gives users an informed, seamless experience. Thanks.